Hey guys, Zach here, and um, I'm a little bit perturbed. I'm just a little bit upset because, uh, as most of you might know, um, I am just a huge fan of reviewing survival games, of playing survival games. I just love, it's probably one of my more favorite games, like right up there next to horror games. I just love playing survival games. But I mean, when is it going to be too much? I mean, they're all pretty much the same, if you really think about the same thing. You, you, you go out, you gather materials, right? You gather materials, you come back with those materials, you make weapons, you make a base, you go out and grief other people, you go out and just, you know, start killing some animals or something like that. But it's all pretty much the same. When will something finally bring me out of this funk? When will something just be so fucking unique and so out there that I'm just going to be enthralled by it from day one? I want to know what kind of game out there will- guys let's start this one let's see if arc survival evolved has something to bring me out of the absolute funk that okay guys fucking knock it off okay ba back up okay back up nobody wants to see this face that closely okay back up just keep ba like zooming in that close on my face is gonna definitely lose me subscribers back the f oh i see what you guys are doing yeah this is uh no you're hilarious this is fucking great assholes ah arc survival a, a game that i remember buying but then immediately forgot i even played it at all but why would i even forget it i mean a survival game with dinosaurs and that was just the original version that i played ever since coming out it's come out with two extra editions Two expansion packs, one where it's just a basic one where you just get a bunch of different maps, and another one that is called Scorched Earth that incorporates dragons. Fucking dragons. And yeah, I get it, guys. Yeah, let's start out with the dinosaurs to kill and tame, just to kind of rake in a fan base, maybe throw in a few oversized scorpions and large birds that you never even heard of, and then let's fucking pull out all the stops. Mythical Beast. Next, it's going to be Ark Survival, Taming Cthulhu and Other Ancient Monsters. Followed by the next expansion, Ark Survival, The Unicorn and Pixie Dusk Massacre. But fantastic marketing idea aside, how is the actual game? Well, to start off, it has more preset graphical and sound interfaces than there are genders. To those who don't know what this game is, have never heard of this game, what you basically do is you gather resources and you build a base, pretty standard survival trope type stuff. Number one, you collect food to eat when you get hungry. Number two, you collect water to drink when you're thirsty. And number three, tame the creatures that are all around you so you can ride them and have them do your bidding. Okay, maybe that third one was new and interesting and I know what all of you are thinking. DISRESPECT YOUR SURROUNDINGS! But it's more like this. Yeah, it's a little lackluster. But, 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 hey! Let, da, 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 ho! Hold on a second. Keep those negative comments to yourself. Hold on, I understand. I only played about five hours of this game, and there's a lot of great, massive, huge dinosaurs that you could tame later on in the game. I understand. I only got a little sampling, just a little taste of it. Just wait until the end of the review before you start calling me a fag boy and start trying to dox me. But yes, you massacre the wildlife all around you for things like cloth and meat, gather plants, punch birds, contemplate what you'll eat for dinner that night, and this is where you start noticing things are, uh... Yeah, just a little bit strange in this game. 
let's just go over the few initial things that I have talked about, and we'll see if any other things sprout up afterwards. Okay, sounds good. Let's start with number one. Jumping is like floating on a fucking cloud. It seems like every single time I jump, Goku's Nimbus comes up and just takes me another five feet that I don't want to go. Number two, drowning yourself is just a healthy way of drinking water. Yeah, you're thirsty? Why don't you just plunge yourself deep inside that water and just start inhaling it? Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, Number three, hitboxes are a little bit off on moving targets. You know, you'll be chasing around a little salamander trying to kill him, and oh, okay, it took 15 more tries than it should have. Oh, oh, and uh, this is where the tools are introduced, and this is where things get really, really interesting. Okay, so hitting rocks in this game, which is great, actually. I want to I wanna touch on that. Hitting rocks in this grade is fine because you can hit any rock you want. And it doesn't any, have these be these special snowflake rocks. You could just hit any rock that you see, and you'll be able to get rocks out of them. That's great. That's awesome. But with a pickaxe, you get flint. You just hit it over and over again, you'll get a small amount of rock, whole lot of flint. But hitting it with an axe gets you a shit ton of actual rocks. What the fuck am I... Uh, I'm sorry. That that just say eight stone? Okay, how much does the pickaxe get me? That gives me flint. More flint. Oh, okay, metal? Where's the stone? Okay, four stone. Now let's see what a hatchet does. Three hits and I got four stones. Why? Why? Why though? An axe with rocks or a hatchet if uh, that's the kind of person that you are. I'm sorry, but if you see a man hitting a rock with a fucking hatchet, you try to take it away from him and see which mental institution he belongs to for his next rounds of electroshock therapy. And this... What is this? What kind of fucking witchcraft are you pulling here, Mama Brontosaurus? But this game really isn't all terrible. I know I'm shitting on it a lot, but it's not at all terrible. It, actually, there are some things in this game that I would like to incorporate into other games. The leveling up system is really neat in my opinion. Here, here's how it goes. You gain experience anywhere from picking berries out of a bush to picking the teeth out of a dead dinosaur's face. When you level up, you get points to put in specific categories that you can either put into strength to be the dodo boxing champion of the beach or you can be a pack mule for your clan and carry an entire mountain on your back it's really all up to you hell you can even upgrade your stamina i said she doesn't have the stamina you also have these research points that you can put into things like building tools or clothing or building parts. The more levels you increase, the more points you can get to unlock additional items. It's just a good idea. I like it. And that list goes on and on and on and on. Character building is also really, really, really cool. And it brings up some just fantastic winners. I mean, ladies and some men who may be into this, I'm not uh, discriminatory here. Just close your eyes, okay? Just just listen to Z here. Close your eyes and just think of the perfect man. Is he, is he tan and just like Hercules where he's just mind of a dead goat, but man, the muscles are just fucking popping right there. And, and, and they, if, you know, if you're not into that, you know, just kind of think of the man. Maybe he's pale and he's skinny, but he has a really beautiful mind. And you know, that's, that's what really is turning you on about him. Just think about all of this. Just think about the perfect man. Okay. Okay, now open your eyes. And if he doesn't look like this motherfucker right here, then I don't even know what women want anymore. <laughs> so stupid. Oh. Oh my god. <laughs> mm. Yes. Yes. I am. I am barbarian. With big titties. Big backbone. And big heart. Now this part of the video is where I try to appeal to both sides to keep the thumbs down low on this particular video. The real question some of you might be thinking is, is this game worth your time? The, the actual name of the video and... No. Or at least for me as a gamer, no. Look, I can understand the appeal of this game, I really do. If you enjoy dinosaurs and get some sort of sexual thrill from dominating them and making a dinosaur farm or <laughs> you just want to reminisce your childhood and play Turok all over again. I can understand both of those. I really do. This game relies not so much on protecting your stuff from assholes. Side note, there's a little thing called offline mode on some of these servers where pretty much if you are offline, your base is impossible to destroy. 
as well as the animals you have tamed. Kind of a cock block for anybody who wants to grief all those raiders out there. I would not suggest this, but instead relies on you kind of fighting against the elements around you. This environment is constantly there to see you lose. It's constantly there to see you fail. When you first start off, if you don't find another person that wants to kill you for your, I don't know, your meat, your, your sweet, delicious, tender flight, don't worry, the fucking predators are there to do it for you. If you start gathering resources for just the smallest amount of time, your hunger will go down more times than a fucking Brooklyn hooker on customer appreciation half off day. Cold for too long because you used your research points to get stuff to build a house, but you have absolutely nothing for clothing? Have fun in hell, you hypothermic hunk of shit. Instead of worrying about PvP, I can see people who just want to go build a base, chill with their friends, and maybe hunt a Tyrannosaurus every once in a while, and just really have a good time. I can understand that part of the bridge. If you want to level up until you can get bows and just fucking destroy every monster that you can in front of you, more power to you, dude. If you want to build a house that hangs off a cliff where you and your friends can bring dinosaurs and, I don't know, try to teach them English, I... I don't know why you would want to do that, but I've seen weirder stuff. Just go right ahead. It's fine. In a server that barely breaks 17 people and how massive these worlds really are, it's really impossible to see anybody else. I only met one gentleman in my hours of video game play, and um, I had to kind of cave his skull and book it back to my base. I'm sorry, but the uh, rust part of me just couldn't help it. Look, if you want to fight against the computer instead of fighting against society, then Godspeed. I won't call this game a bad game. I won't. I know I've been shitting on it and I have more bad things to say than good things, but I'm going to say this game just isn't for me. It's really just not challenging enough for me, in all fairness. And, to be honest, that may be my fault for playing solo and only putting five hours into this game. More bitches, more fun. I know that personally. When you have more friends on, you have more stuff to do, you have more things to fuck around with, and you have more people to back you up when you're fighting the Colossus Cthulhu monster of the dinosaur world. I understand that. But none of my friends had this game, nor did they ever want to play this game or buy it. So I just had, just like my love life, to play the game solo. And frankly, I really just got too bored. But again, I only played the five hours. I would like to re—I would like to reiterate that for the 15th time of this video. I only played for five hours. I understand things way, way deeper into the game, maybe way more fun. But if I can't get past five hours and not want to kill myself, it might be an issue. I know what everyone's going to say, okay? I know. You're just a fanboy of Rust, okay? You've put almost you put almost a thousand million hours into Rust, so that's the only reason why you're dissing this game. It's not that at all, okay? Rust is just more my thing. I know a lot of people I'm not gonna play this the, the dumbass card right here. I understand that a lot of people have recently subscribed to me because of the Rust video that I just put out there. I understand that. And I do enjoy Rust more than this game, simply because you have to focus on assholes who are a lot more i don't know smarter than the ai in this game who are a lot more you know persistent on raiding you so you have to spend more time on making your base better and stronger and everything but again i don't really i don't really consider this game a bad game it's just not for me it's like someone came up to me and it's just like hey would you like to play a sequel of gone home i would say fuck you get away from me with that game i wouldn't call it a terrible game per se because i'm not going to play it because fuck that first game. But for those of you out there who really do enjoy this game, I'm happy. I'm happy for you. If you have sunk 3,000 hours into this game, I'm glad that you found a game that that you enjoy that much. I have found a game like that too. It's not Rust, by the way. I don't think I could play 3,000 hours of that game without at least going to about two therapists. But League's my game. It's I played it for years upon years upon years. I have so much hours into that game. I don't really know. I should probably go to the, one of those websites and check it out. But... If you enjoy this game, God God bless. You know, if, if what I just said about this game does not in interest you, I would pass on it. On the flip side, 
if you actually do enjoy the thought of dominating dominating dinosaurs and uh, killing dinosaurs 1,800 times their size. And since they keep coming out with expansions, I can guarantee you they're going to come out with bigger, scarier, more hard-to-kill monsters. I can guarantee you. So if any of this sounds good to you or sounds terrible to you, I hope I've at least opened up your mind a little bit more. But before I start rambling on, which I tend to do, especially in the uh, presence of alcohol, I want to thank everybody here for uh, for watching all the way to the end. Even if you watched halfway through, I'm a happy man that way too. But you will never see this message, so fuck you. I hope you guys have a great day, all right? I hope you have a great day. I hope you don't send me too much hate mail, but it's the internet. We all know it's going to fucking happen, you pieces of shit.